they need to develop deep expertise how to use machine learning and AI models to solve different business problems. If you don't learn this, the, the biggest uh, disadvantage is that you will be naive. To start with, uh, companies will pay you a premium, industry will pay you a premium, but over time this is something which will become more of a skill, okay. must have skill that, that the company will be asking for. All right, so here we are with another interesting uh, video for you today. We have uh, somebody that probably all of you are uh, looking forward to learn more from, and that's something because we are going to talk about some buzzwords that are out there. We're going to talk about generative AI. We're going to talk about the possibilities of artificial intelligence and what exactly it means for someone like you who is going to be a business professional. Uh, I am joined with uh, Professor Chaitu Chaudhary with me today. Uh, Professor, welcome to Inside I Am and thank you very much for giving us your time. Dr. Chaitu, I want you to you know, describe how then machine learning is different from what we spoke of and that we told our audience that we are going to talk about which is generative AI. Where do you peg the generative AI becoming important for the B school students, students to keep in mind? I think machine learning and AI is more like uh, they are being used synonymously but primarily machine learning and AI you can think of it they are a bunch of very uh, sophisticated tools which can work on large amount of data, I am assuming good data, you know, if, the, if the data is garbage then no matter whether you use machine learning or whatever garbage in it will be garbage out, okay. But assuming the data is of a good quality then machine learning and AI can really drive more efficient solution, possibly more insightful solutions in a very quick way than possibly traditional statistical tools can do. Having said that, it is very important to also understand the quality of solutions that machine learning and AI is producing on the table. In other words, can I explain those solutions which today are being provided by machine learning compared to what could have been done using the traditional statistical tools. So that is a very big question and that is where machine learning is sort of trying to make lot of inroads to say that suppose they produce a solution saying that for example uh, when there is a churn analysis which is going for a bank and they identify Jaitu as a customer is very highly prone to churn. In other words Jaitu could attrite and the question is the fact that why is Jaitu attriting? You know? what is, why is the question? So having a very good answer to that question so that appropriate actions can be taken that is something machine learning has to solve which traditional tools could solve far better. So that is one area where machine learning needs to be more transparent. When generative AI comes into being is a fact that essentially suppose, let's stick on with this example of churn. Correct. And I'm trying to solve this question of churn for a particular portfolio for a bank. And then I'm asking generative AI like chat GPT, what are the current tools, machine learning tools that are there to sort of do the churn analysis? And then automatically, uh, ChatGPT says these are the four tools at this point which is there, which, which you can use to do that. And then also Generative AI can provide you the particular programming code which can be used to do that particular analysis. But you have to go ahead as an analyst to go ahead, apply those tools, possibly modify those tools to specifically answer the set of business questions that you have which at this point generative AI still cannot answer. So machine learning are a bunch of tools. Generative AI is giving you the mechanics of those tools, but specifically what business questions you want to answer, that should come from you, whereby with the knowledge of machine learning, with the mechanics of the machine learning tools, you can then work to come up with the best solution. That I feel will be the workplace of tomorrow where companies won't expect you to know the programming language, the extent to which possibly they needed you yesterday, but they would expect you that you need to know how to answer the business question by leveraging different sets of uh, sort of tools that exist so that you come up with the best answer and also have an understanding what are the pros and cons of those answers that you are coming up with. What are the limitations that you saw when you actually were doing this? And in general, like as a regular user of any of the generative AI models that yeah. or tools that we're talking about, 
what are the limit limitations right now even if i'm using a chat chat gpt4 which is advanced version of right. it right so first of all i'm assuming that the data is something which is coming from some other source yeah. on which you are supposed to do some analysis but if you are asking me from the point of view of applying any specific machine learning tools there the generative ai does a fabulous job in sort of providing you with all the set of tools that can be used to address a specific problem where i think there is a big question mark is in terms of the fact that when i'm asking it to sort of say that what are the some of the other studies that are being done in this area there i have found that uh, you know a generative ai has hallucinates and 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 essentially there you don't get any proper answer and there you have to triangulate it more through google where the information is far more accurate uh, so so whereby you then get an idea okay these are the bunch of important papers or studies that has been made on this particular topic and take that as as more you know uh, something as unit of truth and then combine with the technical aspects of the tools which is coming from the generative ai and combining those two to come up with uh, 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 something uh, something more than when where you started with do you have any examples of companies or any particular sectors that uh, you know uh, jumped in the band bandwagon understood the true potential of generative ai and made changes drastically uh, within their organizations so that to improve on the kind of productivity that they have or the uh, you know in general capacity building of the organization that they have seen in terms of the results also that they are seeing it's very early probably to measure whether those were successful in the true sense or not but have you seen any of these shifts some of the studies that are currently being in progress but nobody has been to claim the no victory saying that we have completely solved it so let's take the example of mckinsey for example so i think that they have implemented large language models for their entire uh, set of work that they have done say for the last i think x number of years so they say they work in you know so many countries and they have produced hundreds and thousands of documents which are in so many different languages so they have, they are so what is making that the end of the this knowledge company yeah. so they what they have been able to create is that they have create their own large language model called lily which essentially uh, uh, sort of houses that information in a very very coherent and effective way whereby analysts can go and sort of get whatever they need far easier than they possibly could have done earlier and then they are focusing more time with the clients in understanding their business problem and then coming back and sort of trying to get some of the answers from lily in terms of similar work which was being done in the past so if you ask me there i feel a significant shift in terms of the way possible mckinsey or any of this consulting companies you know uh, uh, eny is also coming up with their own large language model so this so all the knowledge based companies is where where i feel that they will be the one who will be reaping the immediate benefits because of the fact that their primary business is coming from from knowledge from that point of view i feel that there they will definitely uh sort of uh, makes significant amount of progress and they are only talking about in public another area where i feel that where this will large language models will play a very significant role is in, in the in the context of medicine or healthcare because uh, the way to think about it is as follows that um, think about it sir if you think of a patient today and then what is a patient patient is a, is a combination of bunch of files or or bunch of tests which has been done on the patient the ability of the generative ai is to sort of read through all that information and and summarize in a very effective way and then also as a next step saying that given what it has read these are the possible set of diseases that this person might be having and as a third step saying that this could be possibly the ways in which treatment can be done now think of it this way a doctor earlier who used to see say four patients an hour or five patients an hour uh, in the in the outpatients department now the generative ai is going through thousands of such patients and then summarizing that information in appropriate way the patient is sitting in front of the doctor the doctor goes and sort of you know inspects the patients then goes to the document and then said okay these are the 90% area where i agree this 20% is what i feel needs needs to be done or changed so thereby the doctor is think of it he or she is becoming far more efficient than possibly what 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 they were earlier what's the economist in you uh, saying about this entire situation the moment uh, ai came in in a big way the first thing that people were thinking about is the demand supply gap that's going to be created the kind of job losses that probably might happen very soon the kind of uh, you know countries that you are living in 
how the regulatory models will be uh, was being discussed. So, what is the economist in you saying or thinking, keeping these things in mind and how they are progressing in a country like India? So, if you ask me, um, it is possibly too early, but one part of me is feeling good because of the fact that I, tomorrow I don't have to go and learn a new language, uh, programming language to address a specific business problem because generative AI does give me a solution to that. But on the other hand, I feel that I am a little worried because think about it, tomorrow's large language models of generative AI will be trained on this data, part of which data is already being generated by generative AI. So the question is that today's generative AI models are based on pure knowledge which has been accrued over the years in a very hard and a painstaking way and a rigorous way. Now in tomorrow's world, this part of the information will start getting lesser because the generative AI content will also become a part of this on which generative AI models will start running. So the quality and what should I say of the information or the accuracy of the information is something that worries me. Now how do you ensure the fact that generative AI models are only trained on human generated data not generative AI generated data. So I feel in future there will be companies which will be coming in, data companies which will sell data saying that this part of the data is actually generated by humans on which the large language models will be trained. So that will be a new possible market that will come up. But in general, the second area where I feel that there will be a significant amount of enhancement is that these large language models will become more specific. Say for example, like chat GPT is now being posed as something which can answer all questions under the earth, under this universe. There will be large language models in the context of finance, large language models in the context of medicine, large language models in the context of specific manufacturing, if at all. And so there will be different large language types of models for different domains, which I think will proliferate. Uh, which will sort of give the best returns if you ask me. So, so I think that is where possibly the innovations will start happening. And as far as the question of job loss, I feel that yeah, that is a threat if you ask me. Uh, because think about it uh, earlier say for example, 10 doctors were necessary to attend to see a thousand patients, uh, which they could attend in a month. But today one doctor will possibly be able to attend say 100 patients because of the fact that genetically I will be able to read through all the stuff. And the doctor just needs to spend only one tenth of the time uh, than what the doctor used to pay. So I think that, that that question does loom large as to as to how generative AI and 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 and, and mankind will interact. All this that we were talking about mm -hmm. and we still are talking about is fairly new, very nascent to a lot of people for them to understand as well. How do you then make sure that you teach them or teach the students who are here in such a way that it becomes easily palatable for them? Is there a specific uh, pedagogy that you have? Do you follow a certain structure that you have seen for sure has worked in, in the past and then probably you know you are passing it down to them? With the time of uh, closed book exams, I think that we really need to rethink because we are in a world where essentially information is available. Uh, will be freely available. The question is that how do you take that information in trying to ask a set of intelligent questions and then using the tools around you to answer the questions to a certain level of satisfaction. And when you are producing the solution also being aware of the fact that this is the extent to which you stand by your answers. Okay? So having the maturity uh, of, of sort of thinking this problem from end to end requires the fact that you discuss the concepts in the class in the great detail so that the students are aware of a particular concept from its pros and cons and then making it a point to keep challenging them with questions which are the real questions in the, in the, in, in the context of the business and then asking them that you know, how would you go about with what has been taught to you to answer them using the tools that are available. And why is it important for a B-School student to learn this? If you do not if you do not learn this. The, the biggest uh, disadvantage is that you will be naive uh, to, the, to the surprises that you will be facing and then every time you will say, oh, you know what, this is possibly, I should have thought about it, this is what I, uh, I, I should have done, rather than saying that this is the way I see the future to manifest in front of me and given my confidence, this is the way I want to have my bets and this is the way I want to plan my own uh, financial strategy or my own career strategy going forward. We spoke about some of these sectors which probably will come out to be a bigger sector also in the future. Do you see some of these sectors to be high paying sectors also or if somebody is trained 
uh, on machine learning and generative AI and data analytics properly at a particular institute and they can get into particular sectors for earning a higher salary than what they probably they are doing right now. So this is something if you ask me, unlike in a world where possibly I grew up where essentially you get all your degrees done and you do, you know, so and then you sort of embark on your marathon career, you work for around 25, 30 years and then you are done. I think that in, in this generation what possibly will happen and this is something which I which I tell to the students is that just like a car runs for some time and it comes to the gas station to fill with the gas and run, I think this generation possibly will have to go for that where generative AI is just coming uh, and, and it is combining with the existing knowledge. What this new generation of students has to do is that from time to time they have to sort of go ahead and you know refill themselves with this new knowledge and then sort of you know embark on the journey in, in the next phase rather than sort of standing at one point of time getting all the knowledge and moving with their career for the next 30 years based on I think that won't happen they have to keep on reskilling themselves. To start with, uh, companies will pay you a premium, industry will pay you a premium, but over time this is something which will become more of a skill, right. must have skill that, that the company will be asking for. For the uh, immediate uh, time that people are graduating from here and getting into different sectors, do you see any particular sector paying you a lot more because you are aware of these skills? I definitely feel that in the context of uh, marketing, uh, this is something which, which will, gen they will generate a premium. Uh, for the uh, for the students as well as in the area of financial industry in particular uh, these are the two fields definitely I feel that uh, you know you having a deep knowledge of generative AI uh, along with uh, machine learning in AI you will definitely set you up for a, one a much more uh, premium position than otherwise so if somebody is um, you know starting up yeah. trying to understand what machine learning is what uh, AI is what generative AI is how do I go about data analytics? What is the starting point for them? What should they be reading right now? Is there any recommendation with respect to resources that you probably have had that you would like them to go through? I would say that the best place to start off would be, I would say Andrew Ng's course. Andrew, I think I'm pronouncing his name right or I, I don't know, but Andrew, let me say, mm, you know, his, he has a course on introduction to machine learning and AI and he also has a bunch of new courses that are come on generative AI. I think they are, there are a few of them which are technical, there are a few of them which are non-technical courses. It is important that uh, each of the students across management schools should make it a point to go through those videos to get an understanding what, what, what is this all about and then subsequently pick his or her area of interest and then start sort of, uh, start sort of you know generating expertise on that. Machine learning and AI is something definitely they need to sort of take uh, as a precursor where they need to develop deep expertise how to use machine learning and AI models to solve different business problems and then sort of see how generative AI, the large language models can be leveraged to really improve the quality of the solution. Thank you very much uh, Dr. Chaitu for your time, for your understanding of the space, for making us understand a few things that probably have, uh, you know, given some sort of clarity to students who are looking at this. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, the program that uh, Dr. Jayadu teaches, there's a link in the description, go check that out. Do tell us if this particular video was helpful for you. Do tell us what are the other subjects that you want to dive, uh, dive deeper in uh, to understand more about and uh, share this video with uh, somebody who you think might learn something from you. Thank you once again, uh, Dr. Jayadu, and it has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.